96 Chevy S10 2.2 liter engine, very high mileage over 260,000. We have a misfire on cylinder number 4, P0304, and we have P0200 injector circuit open. I'm not sure about this one yet. Let's uh, do some checks on this uh, injector circuit here. Injector number 4 is one here. Uh, luckily, I can get to it. I can get to number 4, and number 3, and number 1 and 2 work a little harder to get to it. Uh, I'm gonna start the truck and I just like take a Tesla, uh, I mean uh, my uh, stethoscope and just to uh, touch the, uh, get closer to the injector and see if the, if I hear the injector opening and closing for me. You can see the engine is misfiring. I'm gonna take the stethoscope. Yeah, I'm gonna go to number three first. I can hear it. You can hear it in this one too, actually. Now this can be deceiving because the, the sound travels to the fuel rail, but the uh, the sound is more pronounced to number three than number four, so sometimes this can be, you know, 100 percent. As we can see, the engine is misfiring. Uh, when we fire and plug the injector number four, there is no change in the RPM. Now the injector is unplugged. The RPM is still the same. Okay, so I got my end clamp around the uh, one of the wires on this um, on this injector, and uh, this is what I've got. I mean, it's really interesting pattern here. It seems like the computer is trying to energize the circuit, but it just. Uh, and it's speaking at all about almost 3.7 amps. Let's go 10 amps scale. Yeah, it's everywhere. Something's happening, but we really can't see much at all. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna use actually known good injector. I'm gonna rip that injector to this harness and then and repeat this test. Here I have a known good injector, this is a cross injector, pulls around the one amp, and I'm going to use two of these adapters and connect this to my, to my connector. Immediately, the injector is actually working right now. It's clicking. Let's go ahead and uh, the hand clamp around. Okay, and we can see nice uh, current here. Now we're going to change. Our amperage scale to uh, we're gonna drop it down to two amps, and we can see a very nice uh, current ramp. Everything is fine. We need a new injector here. And the peaks are 1.2 amps. Perfect. So we're good. It's a little confusing looking at the current on that circuit it was kind of goofy but you know it's always good to have a known good component you can rig it in and, and check it see what's going on we have a beautiful uh, waveform here from our known good injector we know now that our circuit is okay because it can carry one uh, the maximum is 1.2 amps which is enough for the injector to work so we don't have excessive resistance in a in our circuit, our computer is okay, he's able to read, you know, cam and crankshaft sensor to fire injector. 
and um, you know everything is fine. I mean, it, it, it it's able to uh, you know provide good ground for uh, injector, and uh, so all we need to do now is uh, change the injector. Sometimes it's going to be a, I wouldn't say a part changer, but it's good to have a known good component you can rig into your circuit, check it real quick, and if it works, you're done. Because honestly, I really couldn't tell much looking at the uh, current from the uh, from the original, from the bad injector. It was all all over the place. And then you have to, you know, separate, you know, check your power, check your ground. Um, but you can do it this way as well. Just get a current clamp and uh, see what's happening there. And okay, you, I'm gonna pull the injector out. It'll be interesting to see what kind of resistance we have on it. And um, we're gonna put a new injector in. Injector is out. Let's do a resistance check on it. I have a uh, these test leads made and I have these uh, female connectors so I can plug into the injector much easier and I'm going to put them together just to check resistance make sure I don't have an opening in my, in my test leads and we have 1.1 ohms of resistance so these are good and simply we're going to now connect these leads to my injector <coughs> fit 30 mega ohms basically an open circuit now we're going to take a new injector this one here And we get 12, we have 12.6 uh, ohms, and uh, so this is going to give us a roughly around one amp of uh, of current, and uh, so that's why I can use my GM. In, uh, I'm sorry, my uh, uh, Chrysler injector to check the circuit. It's, it's pretty much the same resistance on it. And uh, okay, so that's about it. I'm going to put all this back together, and then we'll. Uh, Get this one fixed. Alright. Along with the injector, we have another complaint that the blower motor doesn't work. You know, on any speed, when you turn the knob inside a cabin, nothing happens. And I honestly didn't even realize that the fan is actually is, uh, located right here underneath the hood. And I got a harness disconnected, and I have my uh, headlight here. And as I said, the, right now I have my knob all the way up to high speed. As you can see the light bulb is lighting up and uh, so this is not enough because this light bulb is not going to pull enough amps as the uh, as the fan. Now I have the uh, fan that I made it for uh, circuit test tests and I'm just going to plug this one in just to check the circuitry and uh, you can see it's working just fine and that was like five minutes diagnosis since I had my connector right there just might as well just unplug it put no no good uh, fan they, the, the, this fan that I have you know as I said this is I, I made this for uh, <clears throat> to test my circuits on the cooling fans or the blower fans and it works great uh, don't have to be complicated just plug it in and see if it works if it does you're good to go and uh, here's the uh, here's the original one See nothing happens. Now it's blowing literally but it stops. It's pretty much shut. Oh, there you go. Okay, and this one is uh, made in China. I got the replacement from AutoZone and uh, I'm take take care of that as well. But I, I do like these uh, you know, different components that I can test my circuit. And that's uh, if I got a chance to do it, why not? Just an easy, very easy test to do, and uh, we'll take care of this one as well. Injector is in. Let's see how it's going to run.
done better. Still sputter a little bit. God, it was, uh, I didn't expect for the engine to have a little hard start because I was cleaning up the intake and all that. I uh, cleaned up the uh, uh, throttle body and all that stuff, so it had some, uh, had some of the, you know, car cleaner in it, so. Runs better, but definitely there's still misfire. It's not no longer an uh, injector problem. Something else is going on. Ignition, I can hear the popping actually. Looks like I didn't pull the. I'm gonna show you guys. Right there. Maybe I didn't put the boot all the way down. Yeah, it is down. Ah, uh, it's a spark plug. Popping, you know, with ignition. Pick, 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 pick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the sports one is broken here. Uh, right there. This was probably a problem, you know, before, but because it's such a huge misfire from the ignition, you, I mean, from the injector, you really couldn't tell, but yeah, I need the plugs. Along with a bad uh, spark plug on the number two, you can see here, number two coil, this coil is shut as well. There's no spark coming out of this tower whatsoever. See if I can... There you go. So we're gonna need a uh, new coil, new plug, new wire. So that should take care of it. New injector, new spark plugs, new spark plug wires, and the coil, and engine runs much better. Now the problem with the uh, 
coil most likely because the track plug killed the coil anyway. That was uh, number two. And um, I'm going to take it for the test drive and see how it runs. But uh, I think it'll be okay. There's a still a slight shake. This car has been sitting for over two years now. And uh, we need to put the fresh fuel in it and let it run for a couple of days or we um, maybe put some fog cleaner or injector cleaner in the fuel, let that go to the system a little bit and um, if there are any other issues we'll uh, address that as, as well. So far I'm, I'm pretty satisfied the way it runs. Alright, truck is running pretty decent right now so we're gonna look at the uh, fuel trim once it gets into the uh, closed loop just to see if that's okay. <clears throat> Then we're going to take it for a test drive. This is a stick shift, and I'm not going to be able to talk to you guys all the time. But once I get on the on, a, on the my, our bypass here, I can uh, I'm going to be able to turn the camera back on. I just want to wait a little bit for uh, go into the into the closed loop and see the fuel trim. You can see the bias voltage on the upstream sensor. <clears throat> it's warming up. This is only uh, this is a, uh, a single wire oxygen sensor, meaning it doesn't have a heating element or anything. It just uh, the exhaust uh, itself will heat up the sensor. That's why they have to be closer to the engine on the exhaust manifold to get it to, to get it to heat up quicker. You get a long term 11. A little bit of a negative side. Oh, it's correcting itself, that's better. There you go. Alright, yeah, that's fine. The uh, O2 is switching fine. So the. Uh, it just needs to learn the f uh, fuel trim, but it looks okay. A little bit of higher, higher RPM, but there you go. I think that's okay. So far, so good. I was able to set the camera so you guys can see it. Uh, so the truck is going, it's running fine. I'm just getting out of my subdivision. Uh, blower works as well. Fix that. Works on every speed. And. Uh, now, this truck, as I said, was sitting over two years and uh, multiple issues with it. Nothing really that serious. I mean, injector and all that, but uh, ignition was a little surprising that, you know, after I fixed the injector, that ignition started to act up on me. And uh, it was difficult to figure out the ignition without fix an injector first. Now talking about the testing injector circuitry, I used a, um, as you know guys, I use that uh, Chrysler injector. I do that every time I have a chance. I don't have a problem doing that, same as with a uh, blower motor. If you have a component you can uh, rig into your circuit, test it real quick and if the circuit works, if the computer or module is supposed to turn the or a switch, whatever, is supposed to turn the circuit on. If that is responds, if it works, why complicate things? I mean, you're just, uh, you just you right, you, right there. You're done. Of course, you have to make sure that your um, component that you wanna install to test your circuitry that it draws the same amount of amperage, so you don't damage the your circuit or, or your module. And um, that, that's that's fine. We could see that our injector is working fine. It's kind of fun to drive the stick shift. It's been a while since I drove. And between third and fifth gear, it's a little. Anyhow, it runs okay. No more misfires. Everything looks okay. And 
I don't know what else to say. It was uh, multiple problems, but just stick with it and uh, try to, you know, diagnose the best you can and fix the best you can. Just because you have one one problem, which kind of, of course, in our in our case, that the injector kind of overwhelmed the other issues that you couldn't really test it until you get your injector. Sometimes it's hard to explain the owner or you know, customer. You know, you diagnose the bad injector. What's up with the rest of the stuff? But it's just the nature of the beast. You can't you can't fix everything until you fix one thing and then see what else is gonna come up. And I don't know if uh, you know check engine light is gonna come back on. The monitors are not down. Uh, most likely due to a ignition misfire. That was who knows for how long that was going on. With this truck uh, even before maybe injector was a problem so most likely the uh, quality converter is shot but you know what do you do I mean it's uh, you just have to tell the people you know what uh, we just have to wait for the monitors to be done and uh, if the check engine light comes back on don't be surprised we'll have to check it again you know EVAP or whatever EGR and all kinds of stuff nothing's been done and uh, and I'm gonna drive this car for the next two days to for that to be done uh, so anyhow I mean I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with this it was uh, an older car but I have to say kind of kicked my ass it was uh, you, you I did not expect to get other issues other than other than injector and uh, yeah, it's actually uh, pretty decent for four cylinder I mean it runs great but I told him to uh, so right now actually I'm in second gear I, I told him to uh, put some uh, injector cleaner in the fuel tank let it run through and uh, I think he'll be happy between the uh, third and fifth and, and second and fourth the really little little place to little little play and just a tiny tiny play to get your to get in the right gear but anyhow uh, this is gonna be it for now temperature is good Vol uh, charging voltage is fine all pressure is good uh, surprisingly all of the gauges are working and uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's fun to drive, actually. Fun little truck. It's a like, it's a pretty good condition for '96 and it has a 160,000 miles. I'm missing my fourth gear. And uh, I'm not sure if this is the original engine or not, but it's a quite a few miles for this little truck. There's a little bit of rust underneath the uh, driver door, but other than that, it's pretty good condition. Paint looks good. And... All right, guys, that's it. I hope you guys enjoy this one, and uh, see you next time. All right, I hope I'm gonna figure this transmission out. It's not a transmission; it's me. I don't know how to shift the gears. But uh, all right, guys, see you later. Thank you. Bye bye.